I'm going to spend the next few minutes showing you how to create an initial to-do app using two no-code platforms. One is Xano for the back end, uh, for the APIs and the database. And the other one is AppGyver. AppGyver is a mobile and web no-code development app. I'm going to go ahead and start uh, at the very beginning. And the goal will be to just get to the point of attaching the mobile app to an API that gets me a list of to-dos from the back end. And then in subsequent videos, I'll put a search or filter on the list, and then a detail screen, and then an update capability probably after that on each to-do, and then probably an image attachment and upload for each of the to-dos. Um, that should give everybody a pretty robust start on what they can apply to other apps. So in AppGyver, we are gonna create to-do list. We're gonna make it a light theme. Take just a second or two and it'll build that out while it's doing that. I'm gonna switch over to Xano for the back end. I'm gonna build a new app here. This will be the to-do app. Um, we've got the option to build it ourselves. I'm going to go ahead and generate the to-do table right here. They default to the user table. I'm going to add the to-do table. As you can see here, automatically have it create the APIs for that table. We're going to do an email login. We're not doing any authorizations for a user yet. We'll probably pick that up in a later video as we build out more of the capability of the to-do app. So at this point, I have a back end for Xano. If you see here, the database is user and to do. Uh, I'm gonna build out some details on that in just a second. I'm gonna work from data up to mobile app. So it'll be database, APIs, test that out, and then we'll go to the mobile app and connect those in and show them on the screen. Here we are with the initial starting point in AppGyver for the mobile app. Um, I can see a list of the two pages. One is a global canvas you can do app level activities in when it starts up, but we'll, we'll be working with most is a screen that will contain a list. It defaults to a headline and a paragraph, but I don't need those, so I'm gonna get rid of them for now. And now I'm gonna switch back over to Xano, and I'm gonna go into the table that I had them create for me called To Do, and I'm gonna add a couple of simple fields. You'll see me going through this somewhat quickly. Uh, but you can pick up on their tutorials a lot of the details that would make this video too long. I'm going to start with a text field as input. It's going to be a name of the to-do. And then I'm going to add another text field that will be description. So I've got a created app that's automatically there for me that Xano happens. And then I'm going to have a name and a description for each item. Now you've got the option of adding directly here like you would in a lot of database tools or even in Excel. Let's say I wanted to have wash the dog, go to the groomers. Um, and I'll put two in here so when we show the list we have something to show. Um, vacuum the living room. Do this. Well, let's get rid of the period just to make it look good before I get home. Okay, so I've got two to-dos in a Postgres database that is managed by Xano that is specific to my instance. So it's just my stuff, nobody else can see it. I'm not gonna do anything with users at the moment. And what I'm gonna do is take us into the API. So this is the database view. And I'm gonna switch over here on the left navigation and go to the APIs. I can group APIs, but I'm gonna work out of one group for now. And here is the to-do items. And what I'm gonna do initially is just make sure that the self-generated APIs do what I expect and give you a chance to see how to do the debug tool and test some of this out. So I'm gonna do the get of a to-do and this will be a query of all records in that table that we just created. So run and debug and we're gonna run that and you'll see that I get my two items back. And if you wanted to, if you had problems with what you ran, you could go through and step through each of these and see what's going on. Okay, so I know I have a get capability. Um, all it does is query all records out of the to-do table 
and it gives me an output that is ID created at name and description, and it puts it in the to-do variable, which then down here is the to-do variable that we selected that gets passed back to the calling um, tool. And in this case, it's gonna be AppGyver. So now I'm gonna switch back over to AppGyver now that we have an API into a database with some data. <clears throat> and I'm gonna start with going to the data main navigation. Once again, building data up into the mobile app. I'm going to add a data resource that is a direct integration, which is what Xano is in this case. And this is gonna be to-dos. to-do list and such. And then what you need here is the resource URL that will be called by AppGyver to get the data. So I'm gonna switch back over to Xano. And up here, they make it easy. I just click on endpoint URL and it copies the URL of this API into the clipboard and I'll paste it there. So at this point, I've created the base setup for the data resource and where I'm gonna start is getting a collection. So I'm gonna go into the get collection and I don't need to change anything in here. I'm gonna to go to test and simply run test. And as you can see, I'm now calling from AppGyver through the API into Xano, collecting the two items that I created in the database and returning those. So to make it easy to know what variables to work with, I'm gonna set the schema from the response. And now I have AppGyver recognizing for this data resource those four fields. So now I'm gonna switch back to one layer up uh, one thing I'll show you that's kind of a trick thing here is if I try to click on empty page, it's not doing anything. But if you look in the upper right of the screen, you see the save button bouncing. You have to remember to save when you're leaving across main navigation points. Uh, I still to this day forget to do that on occasion. Okay, so now where we're at is on the main screen of this app. And so I'm going to start assembling the user interface by putting a container there which gives me control of margins more easily than just dropping components on the main page. And then I know I'm gonna want this stuff to be scrollable. So I'm gonna put a scrollable view into that container, and then I'm gonna pick a list. Pretty common one is the large Im image list, and we'll drop that into the scroll view. So at this point, I have a page layout that I can see on the bottom right with a container that contains a scroll view that contains a list component. What I need to do now is create some variables on this page to support the data that I'm gonna pull back through the API. My starting point for that is attaching a data variable for this page to the data resource I did in the main data navigation. Um, you'll see it right here, to do. That is the data resource I created. I create it here, come over and look at the variable type, collection of data records, that's what I wanna use. I'm not getting a single item and I'm not creating a new item. So I'm gonna save that. And now I'm gonna introduce you to what is some of the data flow capabilities. When I add a data variable to a page, I automatically get a default flow that will call the API and load it into the variable that I just created. Now by default, uh, AppGyver gives you a delay mechanism here in the flow. So every 5,000 milliseconds or every five seconds, it'll make this call again. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that for now, but a consideration you wanna have is if you have a detailed screen of data where you might be doing edits, it's best to remove this delay, in my opinion, such that it doesn't automatically get the data from the server again and potentially overwrite what a person is typing in at that moment. On a list, I'd rather have it automatically refresh, so if people are adding things, I'll see them without having to refresh the screen. So now that I have a data variable set, I am going to switch back to the view and I'm gonna click on the large image list. You can click on it on the bottom right or visually here, whichever is easier depending on the type of component. First thing I need to do is attach that visual to the data variable that I just created on the screen and you'll see here it is. We say to do and save. And now you'll see it recognizes that it's gonna get multiple items back. So now that I have that attached, what I need to do next is attach the outcome of the property of data item in repeat. So since I'm getting back a collection and it knows that, it's gonna let me pick this and the 
value of the current to do and I'm going to put name because that's going to be the title and that makes the most sense. Then I'm going to go into the description text of this. Once again, property of data item and repeat, go into current, pick description and save. So now what I have, if I save this, and let's see if I still have my emulator up. I'm going to switch over to my live AppGyver emulator, which you can download for free from the App Store. And I'm running this off of my mobile phone and giving you a view of it. That is a different app. So let's go into the to-do list app. And what you're going to see is I'm now showing on my page what I put into the database through Xano. And I'm now pulling up pulling up in a list in the mobile app. And so just to show that that is live, I'm coming all the way back over to Xano and I'm going to go into the to-do list and we're going to add a new item and this will be mow the yard anytime this weekend would be great. Now, if I go back to my app, You'll see since it automatically checks every five seconds, it's already got that information in here. So this is the first step of what we wanted to do. I think in the next video, what I'm gonna do is add a filter or search option at the top of this page. And as you type, I'm gonna have it filter what's in this list. And then the video after that will probably be whenever you click on an item, we'll go to the detail page for it. And then we'll build in edit capabilities. If you've got any questions, let me know. Thank you.